Hey there, Scipio here, and in this video I'm going to install the Autopilot 180 amp current and voltage sense breakout from SparkFun. So I got this because the stock uh, power module for my PixHawk was rated only at 90 amps max, and uh, I just wanted something a little bit more beefy, probably not necessarily required, but I figured what the heck. So uh, I saw some great instructions on this. Uh, there's some instructions with regard to uh, using one of these sensors for 6S power uh, with the uh, APM. So similar instructions. I'm still using a 4S, but I want the extra current capacity. So I've got two little short 10 gauge uh, sections of wire, one for positive, one for negative. And then I got a longer uh, 10 gauge that I'm going to use for the battery connection. And basically what I'm going to do is put the two short ones on one side and the two long ones on the other side of this. So the first thing I want to do is prep up these wires uh, by getting them all uh, tend. And then on the other side of the wire, the part that's going to go to the breakout board, I'm going to split them into V's before I tend them up. That will allow me to wrap the wire around the edge of the board and you'll see kind of how that works. All right, so once I get these wires tinned up, I'm gonna use my handy little vise to hold everything in place while I work. Now, the first thing I wanna do is add some flux and I'm going to add solder to the existing pads on both sides. And, uh, you know, the hard part about this, a couple things, number one, it's very thick wire that I'm using, 10 gauge wire. And uh, the other part is, you want to make sure that you don't do any soldering that's going to bridge connections that shouldn't be bridged, right? So you want your positives to not touch your negative and, uh, you know, and some of these uh, little boards, that can be tougher to do. Uh, they're a little bit more intricate, but this one's not so bad. It's a little bit bigger, but it still is an opportunity for you to, uh, to bridge some gaps. So I'm just going to add... The short positive side, this is from uh, the side that's going to go uh, to the power distribution board. And this is going to be coming from the side with the three holes for the voltage current and ground that go to the PixHawk. So I'm putting both the positive and negative, and you can see you know, the negative is the outside long strip. And uh, just working slowly, getting both of these uh, soldered on both sides. And it does take some time and some heat. Uh, hopefully you have a good soldering iron for this. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side, but with the longer wires, obviously. And feel free to add any solder to bridge gaps or fill holes or anything like that. But uh, it's pretty simple once you get it done. So here's kind of how it's looking right now. Uh, I do want to use some alcohol to get rid of all the excess flux. Uh, I'm also going to check continuity as I go to make sure that I don't have any, uh, you know, things that are connected that shouldn't be connected. And I tend to do that a lot as I go because uh, the worst thing you want to do is accidentally bridge up a positive and a negative coming from the battery. But, uh, you know, a little bit of work, making sure that all my traces are, uh, are clean and uh, we're good to go. All right, so that's how it looks, nice and wrapped uh, on both sides. Now I'm going to pull the cable out of my PixHawk module, the 3D Robotics. Uh, I don't need it, uh, but I want to salvage the cables. And uh, using my <laughs> typical internet resources to figure out which wires I need. Now there is a, a way to add external BEC power to this and power the PixHawk off of this, but I'm not going to use that right now. Uh, I may do that later, but for now, all I want to do is connect the ground, the voltage, and the current leads from this autopilot to my PixHawk. And so I need those three wires. And that's how she's looking right about now. The very last thing I want to do is add some shrink wrap to protect all the electronics from touching anything. So this is some heavy duty shrink wrap I have for wrapping ESCs and such. It doesn't shrink down really tight on the edges, so I'm using some zip ties to uh, get those things locked in. And then what I'm gonna do is just uh, attach the short leads to the board and then run my 
little cable uh, where the pickstock's going to go. Now I did use other zip ties to uh, lock the uh, autopilot into the board as well. And then I also have these uh, little pigtails for additional power. Power for my camera, power for my receiver and pickstock are coming off of there. So I just wired those, uh, soldered those right into the positive and negative pads on the board. So you can see how that worked out, hopefully. And uh, that's where we're at now. So this battery uh, cable is going to wrap around. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it that long or not, but uh, it's going to wrap around the bottom uh, when I'm done. But I have it kind of pushed out the back. Here's another look at it from the top. Gets me where I want to be. So more to come on this as I start assembling the rest of the uh, hexacopter. And uh, stay tuned for that. I'll catch you on the next one.